How's it going guys? White Rabbit here. I'd like to talk to you all today about a topic that seems to be frequently overlooked by fellow truthers. And this topic that I'm about to bring up is so crucial to the New World Order's plans that its lies can be found on the pages in textbooks all across America. Its reach of deceit penetrates our society and is continually referenced in movies, TV shows, and literature. It has been the basis of religious beliefs falling to the wayside and has been the foundation on which other belief systems have arose. It is the deepest, darkest secret that the occult and the New World Order have at their disposal. And it is so heavily guarded and protected that even some of the most brilliant minds in history have fallen for its deception. It is a lie that should be so obvious to those who seek the truth that it baffles me that so many truthers allow cognitive dissonance to keep them from even researching the topic. Once I reveal the topic that I will be covering in this video, you will almost certainly feel a gut reaction. And that gut reaction will be either positive or extremely negative. And I want you to realize that when you feel that gut reaction, you can be assured that we are dealing with a very serious and important topic. I want you to realize that the only reason so many people fall for this lie is because it has been drilled into your mind throughout your entire life and has been reinforced through repetition time and time again. Naysayers of this topic have been demonized and mocked and you will soon realize why. So listen carefully to what I am about to say and hear me out. Resist the urge to turn off this video and ignore what I am about to say. For most of you, this video will go directly against what you have been led to believe your entire life. Do not let cognitive dissonance keep you from discovering the truth. Folks, the greatest lie ever told to all of us is that evolution is scientific fact. It is not. It is a belief. It is a fundamental religious belief. And in this video, I am going to prove that to you beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now, it is important to realize that the main opposition against evolution comes from people of faith, typically people who interpret the Bible literally. The problem with this is that our society has conditioned us to believe that anyone who literally interprets the Bible is a nut and is not to be taken seriously. Ultimately, this results in an added additional mental roadblock for one to get past in order to even hear the opposing arguments. For this reason, I will not be referencing the Bible at all throughout this video. I am not trying to prove the antithesis of the theory of evolution. I'm not even necessarily trying to change your mind if you believe in evolution. I don't think you should, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video, like I said, is just to prove that it's not fact, with the hopes that you will then go forth and research the topic in more depth with a more open mind. Now, before we get into anything, we first need to understand why they would want people to believe that evolution is scientific fact if it wasn't. I mean, what's the point, really? What benefit would they have of convincing you that something is fact if it wasn't? The answer is quite simple. There is a group of crazy, satanic elitists who have set out with the goal of ruling the world. I think most of us at this point realize this. And in their goal to rule the world, they have several objectives that they must accomplish, one of which is a one world government. Pretty self-explanatory. But another key ingredient to their plan is to create a one world religion. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. 
Now, in order to create a one world religion, there are three ways that one could go about it. The first way is by force. And if you look back at history, you can see the Catholic Church itself taking part in such atrocities. In fact, all throughout history, religious conflict has been a key driving force in violent, bloody war. Now, here's the problem. Forcing someone to believe something is not very efficient. And if history is any indication, it's not very effective. Not only does it take a lot of energy and a lot of people, but it's also not guaranteed. You also have to take into account the people who simply will refuse to accept a religion that they do not believe in. This is when conflict arises. And even the people who do concede and who do claim to accept the religion that you are forcing them to believe in, in their heart, will never truly believe. So this option is not very practical or effective. The second option is societal influences. Now we all know that the elite use the media and Hollywood and all these different mechanisms to change the perspectives and beliefs of the population. However, standing alone, attempting to change someone's religious beliefs simply through societal influences is a long shot at best. So then we come to the third option, and that is convincing people that their religion is wrong while simultaneously pushing your religion as not being characteristic of a religion at all, but instead a certainty, a fact. The reason this would be the most effective way to approach this is by eliminating any debate whatsoever. Think about it. If your religion contradicts fact, it will only be a matter of time until people stop believing. Now, it is important to understand that evolution did not stem from Darwin. Evolution actually stems from naturalism, or a form thereof. Now, the debate between naturalism being a religion or a philosophy is still widely debated, but I just wanted to bring this up for you to realize that it wasn't so much science that created evolution and the theory thereof, but the worldview of a few, which likely led to its acceptance and popularity. So let's break evolution down so that we can understand why it is in fact a religious belief and not scientific fact. The simplest way to explain this is by defining our terms. Let's look at the word religion. The first definition of religion that you will find states that it is a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe. The second definition is a specific fundamental set of beliefs and practices generally agreed upon by a number of persons. The third definition is the body of persons adhering to a particular set of beliefs and practices. And the last definition I'll give you is probably the most important. Something one believes in and follows devotedly. A point or matter of ethics or consciousness. So basically, all a religion is, is a particular worldview that people subscribe to, which helps to explain the origin of the universe and is followed devotedly. So now let's look at the definition of science. The definition of the word science clearly states that it is a systematic knowledge of the physical or material world gained through observation and experimentation. That is crucial to understanding why evolution at its core is a belief and not a science. Because in order to qualify as science, it has to be knowledge that is gained through observation and experimentation. The funny thing about evolution is that even if a scientific experimentation and observation was performed, which proved its possibility still would not be proof of it having occurred, but only that it theoretically could have occurred. And there's a big distinction between the two. See, in order for evolution on a larger scale to be able to explain the origin of life as it claims to do, it would have had to have been observed. Now, if we look at the definition of evolution, 
we can see that evolution is clearly defined as the gradual development of something, especially from a simple to a more complex form. Folks, in order for something to become more complex, you need to introduce new information. Now, for the sake of simplicity, just realize that in order for evolution to even be possible, evolutionists claim that this new information is introduced through mutations. Now, common sense suggests that mutations are usually negative things. But evolutionists are optimistic and are counting on that rare case where damage will cause information to materialize out of nowhere just by getting extremely lucky during scrambling of the genetic code. Evolutionists acknowledge that each tiny bit of new information is extraordinarily rare. Therefore, they say that's why it takes millions and millions and even billions of years to happen on a noticeable scale. Evolutionists depend on mutations to generate new information in their model. That part of the model is a huge problem. The stubborn fact is that no instance of mutation making information has ever been confirmed, not even in the tiniest increment. Never, not once. There is not a single field observation or lab finding. The only thing that they've been able to find is a mutation which recombines existing information or a mutation that results in the loss of information. But they have never found a mutation that resulted in new information being created. Never, ever, not once, not one time has that ever been proven to even be possible. Folks, adding brand new information to the genome essentially is evolution. So if there is no evidence that it has ever happened, there is no evidence for evolution at all. Furthermore, if there is no evidence at all that it is even possible, and no one has ever observed it happening, there is no way to calculate an average time frame for it to occur. You can't develop a mathematical equation to express the time needed for this beneficial mutation that would result in the creation of new information to occur. Meaning, there's no way to know how long it would take, even if it was theoretically possible. So this whole idea of it taking millions or billions of years is literally pulled out of thin air. Now at this point, many of you are probably asking yourselves, what about the fossil record? To you I say, what fossil record? There is no such thing as a fossil record. All there is, is a bunch of bones and fossils in the dirt. In reality, all of these bones and fossils actually help to disprove evolution. And substantially, I might add, Darwin predicted the fossil record would present a smooth and gradual transition from one kind of organism to another, but instead we find sudden appearances of fully developed organisms. Not only are they not finding these quote-unquote missing links, they're actually finding new chains altogether. Even more damaging to the evolution theory than that, though, is a little thing called carbon-14. Now, radioactive carbon is like an hourglass that is inside all living things. But once an organism dies, the sand in the hourglass begins to run out. This is called radioactive decay. Nothing on Earth can stop it. And we know that carbon-14 has a short half-life. In layman's terms, we know that it is impossible for any trace of carbon-14 to last more than 100,000 years after something dies. So since evolutionists think fossils are millions of years old, they predicted that fossils cannot contain any trace of carbon-14. However, in recent years, the accelerator mass spectrometer has made it possible to measure trace amounts of carbon-14. Of course, many fossils are completely mineralized with no traces of the original carbon, let alone radioactive carbon. Nevertheless, there is a great deal of unmineralized fossil material being found including such material as crude oil, coal, diamonds, and even dinosaur bone marrow. So what do we find when these things are tested? If you haven't already guessed, carbon-14 is present in all of these things, even 
diamonds. Folks, fossils are much younger than they've been telling us. And now, every AMS lab in the world has the proof. Testing labs all over the world are finding carbon-14 throughout the fossil record, from top to bottom, even after carefully filtering out potential contamination. This is conclusive proof that everything on Earth is less than 100,000 years old. So this brings us to our next topic. What about all the different dating methods that they have used to conclude that these fossils are millions of years old. Well, the first thing that you need to keep in mind is that these dating methods that they speak of, like carbon dating, potassium argon dating, and so on and so forth, are not actually used to age fossils. The so-called geologic column is what is used to date fossils. The funny thing is, fossils are used to date the geological column which is obviously circular reasoning and doesn't make any sense. But nonetheless, evolutionists do sometimes refer to these other dating methods, regardless of whether or not you're talking about carbon dating, uranium-thorium-lead dating, rubidium-strontium dating, potassium-argon dating. No matter which dating method you're talking about, they all make wild assumptions on the side of evolution. Let me give you a comparison. All of these dating methods are equivalent to this. Say I had a burning candle that was 8 inches tall and was burning at a rate of 1 inch per hour. If I were to then ask you, when was the candle lit, you would have to make some assumptions. That is essentially exactly how all of these different dating methods work. The scientists that use these dating methods make wild assumptions that cater to the evolution theory. This is important to realize because when they date a fossil using the numbers predicted using the evolution theory, if they were to calculate a number less than what they would expect to corroborate the widely accepted theory of evolution, they throw it out. Folks, the ultimate result in all of this is basically that all these different dating methods are completely and utterly useless. They are equivalent to making up a number off the top of your head. Now you can research this topic more and I encourage you to do so. And you will find people who have taken fossils in to be dated by experts only to get back wildly different numbers. It is completely and utterly unreliable and is quite frankly an absolute and utter joke. Now while we're still on the topic of fossils, let's talk specifically about dinosaur bones. Now, evolutionists claim that dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. Now, as I've already explained to you, this idea defies modern science. But nonetheless, they continue pushing this part of their theory. Now, imagine the surprise that the scientific community had when dinosaur bones began to surface, which still had soft tissue present in them. Folks, there is no way that soft tissue could survive 65 million years. It is absolute and utter nonsense. Furthermore, they will try and tell you that dinosaurs went extinct long before man. Well, that concept in and of itself is completely flawed if you know anything about history. You can look up ancient cultures from all over the world that all depict and write about dinosaurs living side by side with man. These reports are everywhere. Most notably to some are the Inca stones. But let me take it one step further. There are still reports to this day of people seeing dinosaurs. I'm sure you have all heard of a little thing called the Loch Ness Monster. Now folks, the Loch Ness Monster is not the only one. In fact, there are reports of similar creatures from thousands and thousands and thousands of different people witnessing these creatures in various different lakes all over the world. Now, it is believed by some that these creatures could be a plesiosaurus or something of the like, i.e. a dinosaur. And there are similar reports of people seeing different kinds of dinosaurs all over the world as well. There are even reports of pterodactyls supposedly digging up the graves of people in India from recent years. Now, it's important for me to note that I do not know if these 
reports are true or not. But when you get eyewitness accounts from thousands upon thousands of people, and you frame it in the light that dinosaurs have been around all along, and have been going extinct gradually over the years, like many other animals have, it really makes you stop and scratch your head. Not only that, but it starts to make a whole lot more sense why scientists would be uncovering dinosaur bones that still have bone marrow in them. Now the last thing that I want to bring up while we are still on the topic of fossils is that fossilization does not necessarily take millions of years, despite what you may have been told. In fact, in the laboratory, under perfect conditions, fossilization can occur in as little as a week. So no, it does not necessarily take millions of years for things to fossilize. So let's now move to the subtopic of human evolution. I'm sure that you have all heard at one point or another during your life that man evolved from ape. And I'm sure that you have been told about all of the different supposed transitional stages of human beings supposedly found linking Homo sapiens to apes or an ape-like creature. And all I have to say about this, folks, is that you really need to do your research. The vast majority of these are admitted and proven frauds, yet are still touted as being true. Let me give you just a few examples. Nebraska Man was a name applied to Hesperopithecus Harold Cookie, a putative species of ape. Hesperopithecus meant ape of the Western world, and it was heralded as the first higher primate of North America. Now folks, this discovery of Nebraska Man was entirely based on a tooth, one single tooth. And from that tooth, they somehow magically constructed an entire species that conveniently for evolutionists served as one of many necessary missing links needed to serve as evidence for man evolving from ape. Another example is Piltdown Man. Now, Piltdown Man was originally classified as an Eoanthropus docini. Now, the problem with this particular one is that it was discovered to be a forgery in 1953 and consisted of the lower jawbone of an orangutan deliberately combined with the cranium of a fully developed modern human. Folks, the thing you have to ask yourself is why are there so many frauds surrounding the evolution theory? Statistically speaking, these genetic mutations that result in the creation of new information are extraordinarily rare, meaning that in order for one species to transcend to the next level as the theory of evolution dictates, they would have to cycle through hundreds, probably more like thousands upon thousands, of generations in order for this genetic fluke to occur. My point is this. Either these man-like apes should have been around for thousands and thousands of years, or at the given point in time when they did exist, there would have had to have been a huge population of them. In either case, the quote-unquote fossil record should be riddled with these bones. These archaeologists shouldn't be resorting to creating hoaxes in order to gain notoriety and fame for finding the missing link. They should literally be tripping over these things. Another one would be Lucy. Lucy was discovered by a man named Donald Johansson and was found in 1974 in the Awash Valley in Ethiopia. It was classified as an Australopithecus afarensis and only consisted of several hundred pieces of bone representing only about 40% of the skeleton of this supposed missing link. Now what is highly suspect about this so-called discovery is that Donald Johansson went to Ethiopia with a grant to find the missing link. Now, just two weeks before his grant money expired and ran out, he discovered Lucy, highly motivated, I suspect. Now, Lucy was three feet tall and was obviously a chimpanzee of some kind. Now, the skull was completely crushed, so they could not tell anything about the skull. But when they depict her in museums and in textbooks, they make her appear half human and half ape. The supposed knee joint of Lucy was found over a mile and a half away and 200 feet deeper. And the hands and feet bones were missing. 
yet they somehow decide to put human feet on it whenever it's illustrated. Now one that most of you have probably heard of is Neanderthal man. Neanderthals are generally classified by biologists as the species Homo neanderthalensis. The problem is it has been proven that the Neanderthal cannot possibly be a missing link between man and ape. I highly encourage you to do more research on the Neanderthal man. Unfortunately, there is far too much to get into in this video. But to give you a very short explanation, Neanderthals are actually thought to be superior humans with thicker bones and stronger muscles who actually lived to be very old. They also appear to have a 13% larger brain than modern man. Folks, any way you slice it, Neanderthals are not an intermediate step in the road to create modern man, but can actually be considered one step above modern man. They were smarter, stronger, faster, and bigger than we are today. Now this brings me to a problem which should be obvious to anyone who supports the theory of evolution and who also considers themselves to be a scientist. And that is that evolution adamantly and vehemently defies entropy, or in other words, the second law of thermodynamics. This fundamental law clearly expresses that over time things degrade, things become more random, that things decline over time. A common sense way of looking at this, and something that should be obvious, is that we see species go extinct. They don't come into existence. We aren't seeing an increase, we're actually seeing a decrease. In fact, while we're at it, let me just quickly rattle off a few other fundamental scientific principles that evolution violates in one way or another. We've already talked about entropy, but it also violates biogenesis, Mendel's law of genetics, spontaneous generation, law of information systems, specified complexity, irreducible complexity, statistical mathematics, natural law, beneficial mutation, genetic complexity, and information theory. Now folks, I must ask, how on earth can evolution be classified or considered a scientific fact when even at a fundamental level, even if proven possible, does not prove that it actually happened, has never actually even been proven possible scientifically, has been repeatedly discredited through fossil findings and recent research, hangs the majority of its most significant pieces of evidence on proven hoaxes, and defies numerous well-established scientific principles. Folks, at the end of the day, there is absolutely no way to quantify evolution as a fact or a certainty. It is a belief and a religious one at that. People follow this theory devotedly and base their entire view of the universe and how it works on this theory. And in fact, the saddest and most apparent way that you can see for yourself how devoted the followers of the evolution theory are to this precious belief that they hold in their heart. If you go and look at any video on YouTube that even so much as questions the theory of evolution, and you will find in the comments section a plethora of people attacking the video and the video's creator in a slew of vulgar and grotesque ways, void of any logical basis, solely because their worldview is being crumbled and threatened. It is a belief, it is religious, and if we are not careful, it will be the foundation on which the one world religion is built. Folks, do not believe for one second that evolution is somehow fact, and that you must bend your personal religious beliefs around it. Evolution is far from fact, and is actually much closer to fiction. And it's important for me to note here that the pieces of evidence that they conclude are scientifically proven cannot possibly quantify as evolution, and calling them evolution or part of evolution is extremely misleading and deceitful. 
Adaptation is a much better word than microevolution to explain the subtle changes within a given species of the same kind. Obviously, animals change over time. That's how we're able to breed different types of dogs or faster racehorses for the Kentucky Derby. That's all done through selective breeding that has nothing to do with evolution. Now, as we talked about in the beginning of this video, evolution implies the creation of new information. The problem is that every single one of these microevolution cases that they point to in an attempt to solidify their theory all are the result of recombining already existent information or losing information. In none of these is new information being created, which is what is essential for evolution to be true. To explain this on a graph, I've already explained that evolutionists believe that all forms of life evolve, meaning that they are adding complexity, they are adding information. This can be depicted by an upward graph. Now this is all hypothetical, it has never once been proven in a laboratory setting or in the field. What scientists do observe on a regular basis, however, is the recombining of already existent information, meaning no additional complexity being added, which can be represented by a horizontal line. In other words, variations within the same kind of animal, but all resulting from the same genetic information. Nothing added, nothing subtracted. They also occasionally witness mutations that result in the loss of genetic information. This can be represented by a downward slope, or the loss of complexity, the loss of information. Now sometimes, they try and confuse you, and they will point to something that they claim is a beneficial mutation that is actually the result of losing genetic information. But the way that that works is an organism losing a protein that a virus or bacteria attacks. Therefore, if the organism no longer produces and creates that protein, this virus that was attacking them is no longer able to. And they credit that as a beneficial mutation when in reality, it is the loss of genetic information and cannot possibly quantify as evolution. If anything, it's de-evolution. Now, when we look at these graphs, we know that the creation of new information has never once been observed, tested, or proven, even possible. The horizontal line accurately depicts no information being added or lost, while still creating variations within the same kind of animal. Now the downward slope, as I described, explains the loss of genetic information. Now the thing with this is, you can't continue losing genetic information and still see beneficial mutations. The vast majority of the time, when you lose genetic information, it's a negative thing. So yes, while scientists can occasionally point to the loss of genetic information being a benefit to a particular animal, not only is that extraordinarily rare, but it actually shows de-evolution. So when we look at this graph and we see what has been proven and what has never been proven, and we look back at these bones of Neanderthal man being uncovered, well, it begins to seem as though we're actually, in a sense, de-evolving. I mean, after all, that is what the science is indicating. Now, my point is that when somebody comes to you and claims that evolution is scientific fact, you can be rest assured that they clearly don't even understand evolution on an elementary level. Evolution has absolutely no proof to back it up, and the evidence that is used to support it is questionable at best. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, guys, the purpose of this video isn't necessarily to convince you one way or the other. The point of this video is to entice you to go out and do more research. This is a very big topic, and it has many different facets. And so it's gonna be a time investment for you to go and educate yourself on this issue. To make it a little easier for you guys, I've put together a playlist that I will leave in the description of this video that has hours and hours of good information debunking the evolution theory and also explaining what the creationist viewpoint is. Now, I didn't talk too much in this video about the creation point of view, but folks, I think you owe it to yourself to really investigate that and do some soul searching and ask yourself, do you believe in evolution because it's right or because you've been told to believe in it? 
So there you go guys, hopefully you got a lot out of this. Like I said, this video only scratches the surface and I highly encourage you to please research evolution more in depth and give the alternative view of creation a chance. Having said that, if this video didn't strike a nerve with you, then it probably wasn't meant for you. This video is meant for anyone still trapped in believing the lie that is evolution being scientific fact. And so I would ask you, please share this video with anyone you know who has been caught up in the lie that is the evolution theory. This topic is far too important and far too frequently overlooked for us to sit by anymore and allow these lies to keep being perpetuated throughout our society. Please share this video, get the message out there, and if you're new to this topic, please do the research. Research everything you can get your hands on because I know that as long as you keep researching and you remain impartial and unbiased to the truth you are seeking, you will eventually discover the truth. And if you're anything like me, it will knock you off your feet once you do. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Make sure you check out some of my other videos. Thanks and God bless.